Well, everybody, today I've got a pair of Hillsboro um, single monk straps uh, that really need a new set of heels. So let's fix these up, okay? Let's go. Hello, everybody. It's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of My five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cord. Here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is, though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. The reason I'm introducing this video is just putting heels on these uh, Allen Edmonds Hillsboro single monk straps rather than a total makeover like a before and after. Two reasons. Number one, they're just in pretty doggone nice shape, as you can see here, you know. Uh, the second reason, though, is I forgot to record an intro before showing them before of the shoes. Um, so I kind of cheated on that intro where I had the old top lifts over top of the new top lifts. Um, so uh, the reason for that, though, is because I often have two, three, four projects going Going on at the same time this is not a livelihood it's just a hobby and i'll often record different parts you know uh, weeks uh, you know separated uh, so my apologies on that but i still think i'm going to bring you some value now let's try and figure out how old these shoes are. First of all, if you see the logo, uh, both on the inside uh, and on the outsole, you see the big A, the big E, uh, capital A, capital E, with the rest lowercase, times new Roman font. That logo was used from 1989 until 2013. In 2014, they added the 1922 badge. So I know these are 89 to 2013. Now, Allen Edmonds, if you look on the lining here, uh, they always have a model number. 2501 is the model number. Uh, but if you see the other number after the word COMB, that stands for combination, as in combination last, where the ball width is two sizes usually wider than the heel width, you see 3853. So Allen Edmonds used a date code starting in, I believe, 1972 and they used it up until about 2003 or 2004. Now the date code here is 3853. That means these shoes were made in the 38th week of the year, the fifth day of that week, in a year ending in three. So what that does is that actually narrows this possibility down for us for either 1993, it couldn't be 1983 because they used a different all caps logo, or 2003. Now to narrow it down to the individual year, let's go to the Allen Edmonds catalogs, which are pretty much almost all of them after the 1950s, 1960s are available on issuu.com. Here's the fall 1993 catalog. And on the top right, we do see the Hillsboro model 2501 in black custom calf. So this could be a 93 model year. Let's look at the fall 2003 catalog. And if you look under dress shoes or dress casual shoes, you will not see the Hillsboro model appear anywhere. So that means Helen Edmonds did not make the Hillsboro model in 2003. So this makes them for sure a 1993 model year, which makes them almost 30 years old. So let's get right to the good stuff here. Uh, so this is replacing the top lift. Um, you're going to see in a, in a minute or two here when I pull the top lift off, you'll see that the top lift is actually glued to a layer of black rubber. And this layer of black rubber uh, is nailed with the heel block uh, to the, the heel area of the, of the sole of the shoe. And I'll also show you exactly when you want to replace the top lift because you don't want to wear into... Uh, this rubber part of the heel block, okay? So I'm just scoring it there just basically help try and separate it. And uh, this little tool here that I've seen cobblers use, actually um, a, a pair of cobbling pliers, I don't know actually what you call it, but it, it does work pretty well. So I'm gonna start off with uh, the spatula and um, you may not be able to tell, but only one side is beveled. So yeah, anyway, uh, the yellow handled thing here is pretty similar to what I see a lot of the cobblers using and it does give you some leverage. So. Uh, you just kind of peel all the way around and try not to uh, disturb or damage the heel block. Notice how thin that is. If you look, it's actually worn through it just barely wearing into the heel base but it'll be totally fine but man like that's as long as you want to wait that's what i was trying to explain about that black layer of rubber that's nailed onto the uh you know heel base so i'll just take that to the garage just hit it real lightly just to get that that glue off make a nice smooth surface uh cut out a piece of rubber sheet of rubber i got from land whirling leather land whirling leather in uh 
Like they're in Illinois. I'll put it on the screen here. I got this years ago. What I just did is I took these out to the garage along with the old top lifts and laid them on top of each other and I sanded them tried to sand it to the same shape and in theory that means see I marked this one left left in theory then it should line up perfectly I shouldn't have to trim the breast of the heel I think I hope want you guys to let you know a couple things. Number one, this is a bespoke <laughs> working apron. Uh, number two, um, uh, it is 29 degrees outside and I mean an unheated grud. So I just want you to know how dedicated I am to you guys. Jump now. So there are the heels sanded down, first with 220, uh, then with 400. I, I'm not just sanding the rubber to shape, but I'm also trying to smooth out that surface more than the factory is. And to redime, I'm just using, uh, I have Simple Shine, uh, but this is just, you know, like you can get edge dressing. Um, and I also sanded down the rest of the sides of the sole as well.
so the, uh, what do you call it, dye, yeah, I missed a spot, the dye has dried, uh, I'll wax it next, I'm going to hit that real quick. I'll let that one set up. I'll do this one instead. This step, Saphir, mirror gloss. And what I like to do is take a chunk, a chunky chunk, and load it up that way. Once you do that, then rub it in. I'll just let that set up for a few minutes. Watch this. Isn't that cool? See it again? It's like a magic trick, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit of a roughness there. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. I'm getting better. Next, Pure Polish Cleaner Conditioner. I love this stuff. Uh, this is a, it says cleaner conditioner. Um, I've talked about this quite a bit before, but the ingredients in it are basically uh, orange oil, beeswax, and coconut oil. And use a thicker cloth like this that I did get from India, Pure Polish. And when you use this with your fingers, you'll get more of the conditioning properties. But this is, you know, this leather is not dirty, but you know, it's older leather. I mean, it's, it doesn't appear dirty, you know, but when you use it with a cloth, you're gonna see here in a second. Now it'll get a little bit darker there. There's already a dirty spot, but it gets a little bit darker from being wet, right? You can really load it up pretty well. Watch this. And I should put some true trees in these suckers. Sometimes we're cobbling. I like using shoe trees that are almost um, bordering on too big. Look at all that, huh? Pulls a lot of stuff out. Of it. So we're conditioning and cleaning the leather.
by the way, of course. And I'm using a, working on an Allen Evans shoe. You gotta have an Allen Evans shoe tree. They've had a chance to set up. Uh, what is that? That looks like brown stuff. Well, it's the rag. Anyway, they've had a chance to set up. Ooh, I'm already getting a little bit shiny. Look at that. Yeah, it's already been using Saphir and trying to use this stuff up, so I might as well use this. I usually prefer pure polish, but let's use this. Um, and again, it's cracking, you know, it gets, it gets thin, you know, where the, the, I remelted it, but the wax gets just really thin. And that gets hard to not have it crack when it's, you know, only an eighth inch deep in the tin, but anyway. This is not normally the way I do it here, Sean, but see if I can accelerate building up some layers by doing this. set up for a little bit okay so I gave it a I don't know it's only been like five minutes but it does make a difference you know it's not pushing around whenever you're pushing when well, you feel like you're pushing around Vaseline no mirror shine you either have too much wax or it's just not uh, solidified enough it's not dry enough finished up. I think the mirror shine's pretty good. I had one person say something about these shoes. It was interesting. He's a you know, dude younger than me and he's like, can you change that buckle? And I think I see what he's saying. I think the roundness and the heaviness of that buckle does date the shoe a little bit, but... For the price, right? Not bad, huh? Heel fin my heel finishing work is decent on these. Honestly, it is a perishable skill. What that means is you do get rusty. Right there, not perfect. That's actually, believe it or not, a hard spot because it actually curves in a little bit. And there could be better, but like I said, not bad. And I'll show you the bottoms of the heels. How they came out. This leather is not as durable as uh, Allen Edmonds' leather, but it's very good traction. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on Playlists.